Okay? So let's have now you gather around. We have three tables. Actually, we have four tables because this doesn't even require a table. But let's have you now get up, and I want to have you get a partner, and I want you to have, you have this hands-on experience for this standing posture exam. So pair up, as we would say to the students in the lab, get a partner, and let's see the efficiency and the simplicity of it. Thank you. Thank you. What do you think? Okay. That was perfect patient, perfect demonstration. Straightforward, simple. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna give you one more minute to do your partner. Okay, let's wrap it up. So if I can have your attention. First of all, how many of you had asymmetries when you did a standing postural examination? Okay. And how many found asymmetry when there was a flexion examination? Okay. Now, how many among you do this on a regular basis? Okay, how many don't do it on a regular basis? I don't see, need to see, but was it useful in any way to have it brought before you to refresh your hands and to actually reinforce what it is that we're looking for and what the implications are? Yes, because it's been a while. So even if it is educated to the DO, preceptors as well as the MDs, you've served a useful purpose for also the supervision of the students coming through. Also, how long did it take? One to two minutes, maybe. And of course, you'd improve with your efficiency. But notice how it can be correlated to the person's complaint. And then a physical finding and a complaint helps make a treatment much more effective and much more specific to that problem in that patient. My astute colleague here reminded me that we should also have them take their shoes off, but I, you know, in a normal circumstance, obviously might even have them disrobe, but um, for this purpose, we were going to not do that. Okay. So, but, but the point is, it's very simple. It's done. It needs to be done on a physical examination, and if we begin to have our preceptors allow our students to do it, then I think we're going to see it more in the record as well. Now, let's um, continue on and let's have Dr. King do the second basic skill because this will feel really good for those that you receive this. And it's going to be the soft tissue model. And I'm going to share my mic with you, Dr. King. So I just can't talk loud, huh? I think because it's being video recorded. One little thing I would like to add to the overview is that in our first year curriculum, in the final stage, this whole protocol is very succinctly taught. And the students in their last OPP practical have to demonstrate competency in all of these things. And so we are verifying to all of our preceptors and adjunct faculty that our students are prepared to do this specific set of techniques. Now, the students may be good in other modalities, and we do encourage them to stick to this protocol because this is what the MD uh, preceptors are expecting. So I wanted you to know that part of our overall plan is that the MDs uh, and our DVD, we send, have the, the DVD, all this is demonstrated uh, for them, that they can expect our students to perform these elements competently. 
okay, who's got a sore neck at, that will allow me to work on them? And see, this is one of the other things we always teach. Please, uh, you know, a target of opportunity nearby, on your back, head here. One of the other things that we always teach is we always say, may I touch you? Good. And, and don't underestimate that. To get permission forms a doctor-patient relationship, and we teach this from day one. Okay. Now, oh, can you step off your glasses? I don't want to... Uh, there's two ways for the cervical manipulation. If you look at the Kimberly Manual, they teach this where you get a thing, you, your fingers are right near the spinous processes and you get a finger, I call it a finger full of muscle tissue. Sometimes it's very tight, very tense, and you give a rocking. And as I'm rotating her head, I'm pulling up a little bit of counter strain there. We have also talked about the, the that Deborah didn't describe is we are always concerned about the diagnosis. Uh, and obviously we do the vertebral challenge test to make sure that there's no vertebral artery insufficiency. So we are observing all the careful elements of uh, dealing with the cervical area. Uh, on the DVD, this is the picture we have on the uh, slide show here. When we were recording this for uh, the viewing, I tried to integrate in all of the uh, indications, contraindications. Can you go to that one, Deborah? Because this is one of the things that it really ties it together. When would we do it? And on our DVD, we are saying this would be good for you know, not only somatic dysfunction, enhanced circulation. Uh, Sam, you have a question back there. Uh, do you ever make a point of listening to parodic breweries or only when you're doing high velocity techniques to do that? Well, the fact that we're not doing HVLA kind of gives us a little bit of comfort there. But the other thing about the decline test, or what we call the vertebral artery test, is that you have done it and you document it. The documentation throughout is what's important. I throw in the little nuance of, of besides coming from the, the lateral and the cervical soft tissue, is if you just come straight from the head, usually I'm sitting on a chair and I can just do it both sides bilaterally. Okay, now Gail, okay, you've got some stuff right there, don't you? Yeah. Okay. This is where the palpatory skill comes in. You know, it's not just a rote repetition. That's what massage folks do. We are using our osteopathic fingers to find where it is actually more symptomatic and you can kind of adjust your vector of pull to get uh, the stretching. By the way, you know that uh, stretching is the longitudinal aspect of the muscle. Kneading is the cross fiber work. And you do, uh, you get a sense where it's tough and, and fibrotic and like I'm moving her around to get stretched. Now this is all soft tissue. If you see the slide, we also talk about the balanced membrane tension, uh, and that is where we get into the actual uh, side bending and rotation, and I can check. Now, right now at C3-4, I've pressed hard, and I can make her not quite a chandelier sign, if there's any chandeliers in the room here, you know, to jump up, but I can, I, I, I can, I would flex and side bend, rotate, she says, this is, this is her C3-4 area, extend. What I'm doing is, with myofascial release, you can go in the direction of ease, which is indirect or direct. Okay, now to my sense, I, I've done flexion extension and neutral side bending and rotation. You want to be slightly extended, rotated to your right, and then uh, a little bit of left side bending. Now, I got all of this just from my quick fingers, and then in true respiratory facilitated uh, respiratory cooperation, I say, take a deep breath in and out. Okay, she moves much better in inhalation, so I say, take a deep breath and hold it. Just hold as long as you can. And this, if you 
uh, if you've been th through a, a OPP training in which you have uh, had this uh, balanced membrane tension, it's in the Kimberly manual. Now, what I'm feeling is that she is softening here. But I'm going to wait a little bit, go ahead and breathe. It may take a couple of times, and, and she's giving me a little more, more motion here. Go ahead and breathe again. And hold it, yes. See, I've, I have found out that when she inhales and holds it, her body likes it, the ease of motion, it feels softer, and this is the definition of the balanced membrane tension, balanced ligamentous tension, there's all sorts of ways, okay, she just softened really up. Look and breathe, come back, and then I recheck. And as I press hard right there, well, you are on your right, uh, C3, 4, I'm pressing hard. Again, has that reduced any in your... I don't feel it at all. Voila. <laughs> I love it when these things work. <laughs> but I, I wanted to, now, yeah. should we get ready to yeah. demonstrate it? Yeah. I mean, pair up. Pair up. Now, I, and I'm sorry, Gail, you're, you're kind of in more relaxed now, I hope. But <laughs> Thank you. It's, no, okay. The other things I want to say is I, I took twice as long to do it because I'm talking. When you know how to do it, uh, and it's not that hard to, to teach, we're not getting into the weeds of is it, C4 extended rotated right side, you know, the, the Friet's laws, type one and type two. It really is common sense to someone that's not trained like we are to talk about doing it this way. Also, on that same uh, point, is that many of the students, when we're first starting to develop their palpatory skills, think that respiratory cooperation or something as simple as soft tissue or myofascial release has no effect. And yet, when they develop that palpatory skill, they begin to see how those indirect techniques can be as effective, if not more, in your most sick patients. And so even then, that education to the MD preceptor, or the reminder to the DO that hasn't used it for a while, on how respiratory cooperation can be very, very effective. So let's have you pair up, one down on the table, one up, and have then just your hands in the uh, soft tissue of the cervical region. One down, one up, I'll give you five minutes, and then we'll go on to our uh, next procedure for the thoracic inlet. And we'll fact have you stay at the table so we can just kind of continue on for a couple more and we'll finish up in a few minutes. So one down, one up. I don't see anybody one down, one up. <laughs> one down, one up. Maybe the ones that are most unfamiliar or haven't done it for quite a while. All right, we have one taker, one down, one up. Good. One down, one up. We got one more table. Somebody want to have a nice movement in their neck improved. 